Now I definitely feel that particle physics at A level is really interesting and it's very different to what you might have seen at GCSE. Now for many students you might do this in year 12, especially if you're doing AQA physics, whereas other students might not see some of this until you get to year 13 if you're doing maybe Edexcel or OCR physics. But it's all basically the same and it builds on what you know from GCSE. So first of all, we've got the atom. And inside the atom, we have this dense nucleus made out of protons and neutrons. And for the purpose of this video and all the others I've done, I'm using just these yellow Lego bits to be my protons. There's no reason, it's just a way to model it. So we've got protons and neutrons. We've got this dense nucleus here. And surrounding that, we have shells of electrons, which I'm just using these one by one gray pieces of Lego. So what do you know from GCSE? Uh, so here we've got a proton, we've got a neutron and an electron. Now at GCSE, we tend to talk about the charges on these of a proton being positive, a neutron zero, and an electron is negative. Now really, these are just the relative charges. At A level, we actually quantify the charge in coulombs, and basically a proton has a charge of plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. A neutron is zero, and the electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And what we say is that this value here is the elementary charge. This is the smallest unit of charge that, I guess, charged particles come in. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Likewise with the mass, when it comes to looking at the mass of these particles, we tend to say that a proton's got a mass of one, a neutron's got a mass of one, and an electron is maybe two thousandths of that. But again, this is just the relative masses of these things. We actually maybe want to quantify this in kilograms. In actual fact, if we were to take maybe one of these protons and we put it on a very small weighing scale and it wasn't moving, so this is the rest mass, we'd actually find that for a proton, it's equal to 1.673 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, so that's really, really light. Um, if we actually to look at one of these neutrons that we have over here, that's 1.675 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And the rest mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, so this number here, you will be very familiar with. We're often looking at the mass of electrons, especially when they're being accelerated. So that's some stuff that we know from GCSE and how we extend it a bit as we go into A level. Again, if we have an atom, um, maybe we've got two protons and two neutrons, we can represent this. Uh, in this case, this one here is helium. And we've got helium two, which is the number of uh, protons, and four is the total number of bits inside. Now the number at the bottom is Z, and the number at the top is A. We also have some things which might have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. This one over here, for example, it's still helium because it still has two protons, but now it's got three things in the middle, and this is an isotope. So isotopes, it's just the same element with a different number of neutrons. So again, that's just what you know about from GCSE. And when it comes to looking at isotopes, what we spend a lot more time, especially as we go through the A-level course looking at, are the unstable isotopes. And we call these radioisotopes. And that leads on to things like radiation. So at GCSE, we maybe talked about alpha radiation, which is two protons and two neutrons. We also talked about beta, which is basically a high-speed electron ejected from the nucleus. Well, now we go on to different sorts of beta radiation. Because this is an electron, it has a negative charge, so we call that beta minus. We also have beta plus, and I've just turned this electron the other way around to show that this is actually a positron. It's antimatter, and sometimes we have these positive electrons which are emitted from the nucleus, um, as well as things like gamma, um, which basically isn't a particle at all. Well, maybe it is because we look at the kind of the particle-like nature of um, photons later in the course. But yeah, basically, this isn't really a particle. It has no mass. Um, and yes, yeah, so we've got alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. And as we go through the course, we tend to look more at things like half-life. But why is this interesting? Well, it's because at GCSE, we kind of didn't go into loads of detail. Why is it that we have negative particles which are orbiting a positive nucleus, but yet they don't go straight into it because there's this attractive force between the two. Why is it that if we have a nucleus, perhaps like this, and you maybe bring another um, 
positive proton towards this big mass of positive things, why doesn't it all repel? I mean, you can see this here. As we bring this closer, we can see there's definitely a repulsive force between the two. And basically, all of these positive protons are pushing away from the other positive protons, spaced apart by some of the neutral neutrons. But effectively, when this gets really, really close, rather than it being repulsive, suddenly it can actually join on. And there's this attractive force. And this is because inside the nucleus, we don't just have the normal forces that we're used to. We have this strong nuclear force and that overcomes the electrostatic repulsion. And actually, if we start looking more at more detail at these protons and neutrons, we find that we can split them apart. Now, this is when we talk about fundamental particles. And the electron is a fundamental particle. We can't split it down any further. But actually, we have things which are like electrons, but heavier, and we call these muons. And also, we have these really, really super heavy electron-like things called tau particles. OK, so we've got some new particles we maybe haven't seen that much before. Um, associated with these, we have neutrinos. Um, so we might have the electron neutrino. Again, that was never really discussed before you get to A-level. And if we were to actually split apart a proton or a neutron, we'd find that it's made out of smaller things called quarks. Now, quarks can't exist on their own. They come in twos or threes. Uh, and this is basically um, a class of particles called hadrons. Now, you might be familiar with the LHC. Over at CERN, we have the Large Hadron Collider, and hadrons are particles which are made out of quarks. Sometimes they're called quarks. I prefer the name quarks. These ones over here, the electrons and so on, these are actually what we call leptons. And basically, inside protons and neutrons, we have a different combination of quarks. Inside a proton, we have two up quarks and a down quark, and that makes our proton Inside a neutron, we have an up and two downs, and that makes our neutron. So we can split neutrons uh, and protons apart, but we can't split quarks apart. So at the moment, and there's different sorts of quarks, these are what we call our fundamental particles. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to develop our knowledge of as we go into A-level physics. Um, and I do think that this is like a really, really interesting area. It does get a bit weird. Um, and I suppose, like anything, the more you read about it, the stranger things become. But that is just a very brief introduction to particle physics at A-level.